<laughs> Tony, good luck getting all these out of there. Did you start rolling on that? Yep, it's rolling. If I hadn't asked, I would have said keep the claps in the podcast. Check. How fast can you clap? How Eddie. fast can I clap? See Check this out. Do it. There's about 10 right there. I didn't hear any of those. It's too fast. Too fast for the hearing? It's, or the like, it's like thunder. You'll hear the claps in like 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm just trying to do it under the table. All right, we're doing the cracks, Gus. We're not going to fuck it up. What? Okay, you have to run me through this dumb asinine rule that you have. How it's been... Has it been three years of the podcast? Uh, oh my god, it's been three. Ooh, years. Dude, we didn't even did. talk about we it. We forgot. <laughs> you're, so, <laughs> we, you're saying it like it was last week. Oh, I think we're a month late. No, it's like two weeks. We're in the ballpark. We're in the window. I thought we started in August. <laughs> what the year? What month is it? It's September. It's about to be October. Did what? you think it was August? I kind of thought it was. You did know. you for real? Are you not? No, bit. So you thought I kind of thought it was, thought it was like September eighth or something. Dude, maybe. Yeah, you ready for the date? <laughs> One, 9-11 happened. You remember that? A bunch of them happened. I can't keep track of every 9-11. That's literally the one thing you're not supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> forget. I didn't forget. I just mi uh, mi mi misallocated it. So you thought it was like September 8th? Yeah. It's September 25th. It's about to be October. It's fall now. I don't like this. <laughs> Run me through your rule system here, gamer so boy. It's the same. It's the same rules as always. Okay. The rules on the can. It, nope. I count down from three, and then I say go after one, and then we crack uh, when I say that last word. You say go after one. Okay, go ahead. So, I I freaking heard you, dude. Don't patronize three, me. Three, two, one, go. You were gonna go. Well, you didn't say go after one. I was gonna say that because you didn't. You gotta give me the go actual after one. Yeah, how? You how? didn't count down for three! You can't just hit people out of nowhere with that shit! I just counted down from three a second ago. If you're waiting for me to say go after one, I just said go after one. I cracked it on go after one that time. I didn't count down that time. Well, because you made it clear you're not counting down anymore. Oh my god. Listen, we have what? pressing matters we need to talk about on the podcast. Is it, is it the B word? What? <laughs> not like bitch, I meant business. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> also, speaking of that, is there an email that you and I desperately need to answer that we haven't yet is there yes uh is there actually has to do with the podcast show i saw it right before this we have missed uh about three follow-up emails just about some small logistics of that podcast show hmm let's do a uh, let's do each other a favor yep. and both we'll give it the attempt to respond later we'll do that what's wrong with us we'll bump hey listen I've been going through a lot man <laughs> you've been going through a lot man the podcast's been going through a lot uh, the thing we have to talk about immediately yeah. Is that Chris Pratt is Mario. Thank you. Yeah. If you, uh, this is a couple of days ago. Obviously, everyone's heard the news. I was streaming the Nintendo Direct. I had to have this happen live in front of an audience where they said, we've got the Mario movie cast. Get ready for it. Chris Pratt is Mario. Charlie Day is Luigi. Uh, also, apologies if you were not updated on the news. I'm sorry to hit you with this, especially if you're driving, because I'm sure you're swerving off the road. <laughs> Charlie Day is Luigi. Keegan Michael Key is Toad. <laughs> Jack Black is Bowser. That one seems fine. Yeah. Um, uh, Sebastian Maniscalco is a character called Spike. Um, <sighs> Fred Armisen is Cranky Kong. Seth <laughs> Rogen is Donkey Kong. <laughs> None of those were made up. That's the real cast. Right after they announced Chris Pratt, they said, he's so cool, on stream, on a Nintendo Direct. Did you ever think watching a Nintendo Direct, you'd hear them call Chris Pratt cool? No. What happened? What? Who did that? This is one of those movies where you actually, your first thought is like, we are in a weird timeline. Mm -hmm. If this movie's going to exist. I just don't. I saw a great post of, uh, it was the top of YouTube Haiku today, and it was somebody took the uh, scene from the Sonny and Family Pepe, Fight. Oh, 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 not not the Pepe Silvia. No, one? but that oh, okay. one was also great with uh -huh. the Mario and the, yeah. yeah. So they took Pepe Silvia, or not that one, they took the Family Fight one because Keegan Michael Key's the host of that, and it's oh, Charlie. Oh, right. And it's just the exchange that they have about where he's trying to be like, show me Dragon, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they just, they just shittily edited it in like, let's -a go. Like, <laughs> like just them doing voice noises. <laughs> Stuff. Dude, what, I just, what, more than anyone on the cast. Oh, yeah, and also Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, who's having a huge moment right now, is Peach in the Mario movie for Could Illumination. Kneecapping that momentum a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I just, I, Chris Pratt is Mario is the big one where it's just like, 
Huh? I don't like that. I act. I, I actually see, dislike. I it. didn't see anybody go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Should I, do I say that we could have been considered for the roles? I think so. Yeah, you look like one of those guys already. I look like two of those guys, in fact. Whoa, they're brothers. Yeah, I'm not. Where I wish I was wearing green or red right now, but who, I'm not. Who could I be? You could be. You could be Peach. Okay, I'll, I'll be a, Luigi. I'll be Peach. Fine. You can be. Uh, you can be blooper. What's that? Oh, the, like the, the goober squid, blooper the squid, squid thing? That, that bum, inks bum, everybody. Bum, 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 um, bum. Hear me out. I said on stream, I was like, and actually, if you're casting this movie with real people already, I think Aquafina as Dry Bones would be a good casting. Just that little raspiness in her voice would be kind of cool with yeah. Dry Bones, I think. That's a good idea, yeah. actually. But um, I, I photoshopped... Uh, uh, Adam Driver cast as Daisy and just, no joke, just made the D, the D that's supposed to, you know, where the Mario M would be in that logo. Just made it a P. Nobody noticed. Nope. There's not a P in Adam Driver. There's not a P in Daisy. Just put a big P there. <laughs> Nobody said a thing. Guys. I really was like, somebody's going to say something. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> noticed. That's okay. Not everyone's smart as you. That's the thing. I'm... I'm Pulling one up, I'm pulling one over on everybody. Dang. You know the wool. Can I, consider the wool pulled right over my eyes. Eddie. Yep, and pull, consider your pants pulled down and your your uh, bare butt spanked real hard. Why? Felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. Well, you know, sometimes that's the way the pants fall <laughs> and my hand hits hard against an ass. Damn, that doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? They call me uh, Spanky Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I get cast as Spanky Kong in the movie. <laughs> you just got a big hand and one small hand. Yeah, that's how it goes, you know. I was going to say, um, do, you, do Chris Pratt, is Chris Pratt cool still? I think he's part of that uh, celebrity church that's very anti-gay, so I would say no. That's what I was like. I, I don't think that people of our age or younger generally consider him to be really cool or interesting. He was really fun in he the He was for fun. a while. I've never seen... Listen, I didn't... I think I tweeted this and it didn't get much love, but I think this is, I think, one of my most spot-on observations is that Chris Pratt slowly morphed into Mark Wahlberg. Whoa, is yeah. Is he not currently almost identical to Mark Wahlberg now when you see him? Yeah. Same vibe. Same vibe. Rise and grind, buff dude. Mark Wahlberg's a little religious, right? I think he is. He has a fucking insane schedule. Have you seen his schedule before? Mark Wahlberg's schedule? Yeah. Pull it up. Uh, dude, it's like no human should live through this. Get that itinerary cooking, guy. Okay. Just checking if we're recording. Yep, I was just checking the time, too. We start at 106. Uh, Six. Um, okay. So this is his typical daily schedule. Get ready. There's, you're going to get hit, punched in the face with a cur uh, curveball. I guess those are two things I just combined. It's not a punch. It's a ball. Curve wall. Yeah. There you go. Uh, 2.30 a.m. Wake up. So I already hate this guy. 2.30 a.m. Wake up. He has employees. And you're <laughs> like, you know he has at least an assistant. And they're like, fucking hell. The Marks second up. they get hired, they're like, Marks up at 2.30 a.m. Okay, 2.40, oh, yep, yeah, 2.45 a.m., prayer time. He wastes no time. What happens between those 15 minutes? He wakes up, he stares at the wall, 15 <laughs> minutes go by, alarm, prayer time. He just, <laughs> whoom, <laughs> it's right down. God, it's been 15 minutes, so you know who it is again. <laughs> um, 3.15, hold on, 3.15 breakfast. This man spends a half hour praying? That's too much. What are you praying for? Why? If you're spending a minute praying, that's too long. Yeah. You don't have a bullet point every day of just like, hey, God, hope I get hired. Yep. Mom's either, sick. Either you're asking God for something that'll take a little bit, or you're just going, I'm assuming for Mark Wahlberg, he just goes, hey, baby, let's keep it going. That's good. He goes, give me another movie where I can play a real life guy <laughs> and we make it just a little more heroic than it actually was. I'm just a working class Joe, but I'm <laughs> going to save the day. But give me some Dunkin' Donuts. What is that, an oil spill? <laughs> <laughs> Deepwater Horizon. <laughs> Boston Bomber. Was he in one of those too? I can't remember. I don't know. Was he in one of those? I don't know. Was he the boss? The bomber? Departed. The that's, Departed. That's one of his lines. Ted too. <laughs> he looks right at the camera. The Departed. <laughs> you see this guy, I'm going to make him get departed. <laughs> and he shoots him. All right, so 3.15 breakfast after a half hour prayer. <laughs> if Listen, if you're religious, I feel like you you don't deserve a half an hour of God's time every day. You don't. 
And also, can I just say, these fucking hyper Christian people and stuff. Uh-huh. Cool. They're so willing to go out there and be like, yeah, this is all what I'm about. I got this big relationship with God. The Bible directly teaches, because I fucking read the Bible, that you're, it, it's faith is supposed to be a personal thing for you, too. And you're supposed to... Well, he's personally talking to God for 30 goddamn minutes a day, so... <laughs> he's clogging up the line. He did just say prayer time. I do like that he calls it prayer time. Prayer That's time. <laughs> um, you think he wakes up, and after those 15 minutes, he goes, he's like, he scratches his eyes and goes... Prayer time, baby. <laughs> uh, he adds that for everything. Okay, 3.40 to 5.15 a.m., he works out. Then 5.30 a.m., he has a post-workout meal. Not snack, meal. 6 a.m. shower. This is a typical schedule. Ready? 7.30 a.m. golf. He has been awake for five hours. He's had no relaxation time, really. This man is playing golf after waking up at 2.30 at 7 a.m. 8 a.m., snack, I'm assuming on the course. 9.30 a.m., cryo chamber recovery. What the fuck? This is totally like a rich, just like my body's going to be a machine guy. Yeah. Um, 10.30 a.m., snack. 11 a.m., family time slash meetings slash work calls. That is at odds with each other. I'm going to guess it's a little more work calls than a little more <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 1 p.m. lunch. I, I'm stressed hearing the schedule. Yeah. He's been awake for almost... Oh, bumped the cable there. Yeah. He's been awake for almost 12 hours. Insane. Can you believe that? Uh, 2 p.m. meetings and work calls again. Could have pushed it there and kept family family time. 3 p.m. pick up kids at school. 3.30 snack. 4 workout number 2. 5 p.m. shower. 5.30 uh, dinner and family time. 7.30, he's in bed. He's in bed at 7.30? He's got to wake up at 2.30 a.m. Well, does he live in L.A.? I don't know. Uh, maybe? So you're telling me that for over half of the year, Marky Mark is fucking zonked out with arguably two hours of daylight left to go? Yep. Do you ever think about the to- some of the times we are uh, like drunk on Discord? Mark Wahlberg is like, it's prayer time. <laughs> what a great morning. God, thank you for this great morning. And I'm like... Warzone victory! <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand people that do that. I actively, I look at that, and I think that can't be good. That's good not for a brain. It, it's good for them. It's a bad brain. We, well, Marky Mark has a bad brain. I don't think, well, that's true. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with Chris Pratt. <laughs> We actually have to Eddie's, cut that. That was so awful. Eddie's making DJ noises over cord? here. Um, um, okay. Well, oh, sorry, Tony. We'll just uh, if you just want to cut that audio, Tony, you don't have to cut. Just cut. There was an awful cable noise when I bumped it again. Eddie I'll was never going, touch the cable again. Chicka, chicka. Yep, that's Marky Mark got me inspired. <laughs> but Chris Pratt went from this like lovable schlub to to like action movie hero in a couple of years, sniffing his own farts now. And it's just like I don't think people like that. We nobody don't like likes that. nobody likes to see we love to root for somebody, but the second they're like, I'm a serious action hero. If you're not introduced to the public like that, I feel like it's very difficult to be. Has there ever been an action star? I'm trying to think that like went full action and was beloved after doing like a lot of comedy? Hmm. I've only ever seen it go the other way. Like some examples are like Leslie Nielsen from like Naked Gun movies and uh-huh. shit was a serious actor for decades and then into his like I think sixties on up. Oh yeah, that's well that's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. The well opposite. there's a lot of opposites. There's a ton there's of there's a lot of people that are, are good at action and are also very funny. Pierce Brosnan. Um there you, is it Pierce Brosnan funny? Yeah, he's do he's was in like the Cornetto trilogy and shit. I think Mamma Mia. Oh yeah, he is. He smiles in Mamma Mia. He's I think. not funny <laughs> in Mamma Mia. <laughs> well, I think we're laughing at two different lines, guys. <laughs> he's just like a guy. I and Mamma Mia. He's not really. He's just like one of the dads. Here we go again. <laughs> I hate that so much. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. Comedy into action. Um, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Wait, into action? What yeah. did Vince Vaughn do in he, action? Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. He was a serious army guy. I don't know if that counts as like an action hero, though. Brother, you weren't there. Listen. Just let me get one more. <laughs> Please. We, me and Curtis and Tyler were saying that for fucking it's years. It's so funny, dude. Yeah. No, I, I love it's, – it's like oh, – I watched Axel Ridge. I liked it. Um, uh, but he um, – just the let me just get one more can be so funny in so many contexts. Yeah. Curtis, my favorite thing is we'd be like going out to like the bars and stuff, and then uh, like we'd be drunk or whatever, and it'd be the end of the night where you can tell like – 
he wasn't actually pushing to keep like getting dangerously drinking, but was playing into that like lovable like kind of thing. But where we'd be like, we do, we gotta go home, and Curtis would be like, please, Lord, let me just drink one more. <laughs> 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 oh man, I uh, that's they should cast uh, Andrew Garfield's character from Hacksaw Ridge. As Yoshi in the new Mario movie. <laughs> I'm just a little ba- I'm, I'm a southern child. <laughs> that, that's his character. Yoshi refuses violence because of his religious beliefs. I don't even <laughs> think if you're so religious, you're not going to use a gun in the war that you're using 30 minutes of a prayer time in the morning. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to eat one more fruit. <laughs> you know that guy, even because that was a real guy, right? That like uh, rescued people without a gun in World War II? Desmond Doss. Yeah, okay. Well, let's look at this fucking big brain over here. Brain's too big. I feel like he would have been like, God, I'm going to get all these guys. I'll keep it to a tight 15. I don't want to <laughs> take up your time. Over here, Marky Mark's going like, well, God, what did I do yesterday? Well, 1030 <laughs> was a snack. <laughs> and then meetings later. God, please give me the clarity. Is Ted 3 worth my time? <laughs> I might do it. Amen. God, I still sometimes close my eyes and feel like the lone survivor. (laughs) I'm just an actor. Please help me break out of this. I'm sorry that a few decades ago, I would literally drive around and call people the F.A. You know the rest word. (laughs) That is a true story, by the way. I'm not just manufacturing this. And I don't really think you have to think about the word, God. I feel like you hear it from a lot of people that maybe talk to you in this (laughs) way. God, do you mind if I say it? It's been so long. It's just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> the first time Mark Wahlberg hears from God, he just goes, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. God? No. That's the only thing he ever says to him. <laughs> you can't say it. <laughs> what? What? But I'm Marky Mark. Oh. God. Oh, well, alarm's going off. Time to work out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was laughing so much. I, uh, so... People uh, who have been watching my stream know, uh, for a Burback video, Tony and I have been playing through Spider-Man PS2. And then also, uh, you know, Tony and I were draining some wine over Discord and uh, watching Spider-Man 2, uh, the Tobey Maguire movie, um, yesterday while eating pizza. It was one of my favorite nights on Discord. Uh, But the video game makes story changes because it's a game and it works differently. You know, like you can't just move through that that story when it's an open world like New York for for Peter. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a scene for it where in Spider-Man 2, uh, uh, spoilers, <laughs> uh, well, one, Peter and MJ, one of the worst relationships in any comic book movie ever. Yeah, terrible. They're so toxic. Like, he doesn't have time for her, keeps forgetting about her shit. She is, like, getting happily engaged, and he just keeps, like, meddling in it. And then she l- is an asshole to that guy. But there's a scene where in the movie where she just says, like, Peter, I'm seeing somebody. You know, it's it's that pretty much in the game, which is performed by Kirsten and Toby. Uh, she goes, Peter, I'm seeing someone. And P- Toby goes, really? And MJ just goes, really? Yeah. <laughs> and they changed that. And they, wh- why did they make her do that? Why did they make her make fun of him? It was so out of place and so not in the movie. Dude. Where she's like, Duh, really? Yeah, Peter. Oh, huh? my spidey sense is a tingling. Get over yourself. Like, what was that? What the fuck? That is so fucking weird. Are there any other games that you've played that are movie adaptations that use the original voice cast? Um, I don't know. Because, like, obviously outside of clip stuff, like the Lord of the there Rings might games. might be some of the Harry Potter games that have the kids. Maybe. Maybe. I, I do remember, though, especially playing all the Harry Potter PC games and stuff. They had some ones where the, like, the voice actors definitely were not yeah. those guys though and it was so fucking funny i think maybe goblet of fire was them i i don't actually remember i hated the goblet of fire game you, we i don't know if we said this before but the goblet of fire shit makes ron sound like an <laughs> sound like somebody that would need a lot of extra attention paid to him growing up he ron sounds so unsmart he is oh. like the whole time all his voice lines are so oafish and out of place and stuff. It's like somebody making fun of Ron it's, on the y- mic. Like it literally sounds like the thing we we're doing with Jake. Either, not me, not <laughs> mine. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Where in that game, you're, some of the collectibles are birdie bots, every flavor of beans. Right. And he literally, like half of his, his lines are about the beans. What? He'll just go, beans? What is a bean? What? Like, I, I gotta find, I don't know how Pull the fuck up. we'd find it. Yeah, Here. just... 
Goblet of Fire, Ron Bean yeah, line? So Goblet of Fire um, game, and I'll just search Ron and see if something comes up. Goblet of Fire game, Ron. Um, no, then it's a lot of like, why did I play this the worst? Yeah, we're not going to find a game. Damn it. it. And it's like. only the PC one, too. Oh, oh, okay. That's fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. I forgot how terrible these character models looked. Yeah, it wasn't a good time. <laughs> looks so um, stupid. Also, yeah, we're so we're working on a video. So subscri- subscribe to the Burback channel. I don't know when it's gonna be out. Links in the description. Uh, yeah, but I I don't know when it's gonna be out. I'm just I'm not gonna you know sometimes there's sponsor stuff. I'm I'm done saying like it'll be out this day because then you know you're ready to go and a sponsor's like, let's pump the brakes a little bit. And it's yeah. like Also, we might not get a sponsor, so who knows? They're gonna say you're coming on too strong, guy. The channel's in its infancy. You don't know if you can rake in the cash yet. That's true. I I bet you. Th- this month, though, boys, that Burbeck channel hits 100,000 subscribers. I would love that. It's at 88.4, and we posted two videos, which we are very fortunate for that. That's pretty much, like... That's good shit. How the fuck, you know, we don't deserve that. I mean, honestly, there are people really rising and grinding on YouTube, probably with better quality <laughs> that are not. But guess what? What? Not going to think about it. Whoa, the pinky's up on this guy. Pinky's up, and I'm sipping. Ooh. That... That sounds really bad and frothy. Is that? Are you f- siphoning that through your mustache? Mm-mm. Sounds like That's it. That's the that in practice is so gross to me. <laughs> <laughs> Siphon a drink through my mustache, I would never. Yeah, you know, never a little. What if there's a loose hair? Hey, a I'm sipping loud and then. Whoop. You don't like that loosey juicy, do you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Wherever, wherever you're going with it, no, I don't like it. Okay. What is the nicest? What is the most expensive drink you've ever had? Because we don't, because we pride ourselves in being, we're cool with anything, boys. Expensive, dr- oh, maybe, maybe that whiskey you got me? Really? Yeah, I don't really think I've had, like, pricey, I don't know. Have we had any other, like, fancier drinks when we were out doing something? I'm, that's, I'm thinking it'd have to be some industry event, like Dude, Buffer Fest or some shit, you know? I sometimes think, <laughs> especially when we were fucking, uh, like, 20, or two, like, at the time I was, or actually, I was 21, probably you were, what, then, like, either 22 or 23 at the time. Where we were going to like some fancier like industry parties where it was an open bar. Oh, and God. we instead of trying like a really cool drink, we'd just like order a Bud Light at an open yeah. bar. And it's like I could have gotten that anywhere. Could have done it. I remember the first year we went to Buffer Fest, which is like a Canadian uh, YouTube film festival. Love kind Buffer, of thing. please have us back. <clears throat> Let's That's do it. it. That's all. Amen. Uh, they had. They always have like drinks and stuff in the lounge and shit. And there's a bartender. And the first year we went there, they had they had a limited range of alcohol and stuff. But they they were making white Russians. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, you were having white and Russians, I, and I was I like, probably, Cuss, why? Why the fuck? <laughs> and it was just because I never had one before. I was a big Lebowski guy, and I was a young twenties guy. We were. Can I say <laughs> yes. we were? Uh, we've talked about Buffer before. We were at that event. So YouTube beginners. Didn't know anybody there. Mm-hmm. Gus just starts draining white Russians. <laughs> I probably, one night I probably had six white Russians. There was probably, <laughs> like, honestly a good deal of time because we didn't want to bother people. We didn't really know how to mingle. Also, we were younger. I'd say we had less confidence socially. Yeah. There are some times where you and I were just talking to each other in the corner of the room, not socializing, and the only time we'd move is for you to go get another white Russian. I was just saying. <laughs> just we- draining white Russians in the corner like, do you... Do you think we should say hi to somebody, or is that weird? There's Elle Mills. We could say hi to her. Actually, Elle was the pers- first per- person we met there. Elle was really nice. We It was really awkward because, not with Elle, but with, uh, we, uh, I remember, were the, like, pretty much, and I was much smaller, it was before my first commentary video blew up. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we were kind of the smaller YouTubers there, and then we got there first. I don't know if you remember. Mm-hmm. We were the first people at the bar. We kind of became friends with the uh, bartender for the weekend. Yeah. We were the first person that, that he talked to. Um, but I remember just being like, okay, so everyone else is going to come in and we, they all know each other and we don't know anybody and yeah. we're the first people here. I remember just being like so nervous. Damn. Yeah. That was fucking, doesn't that literally feel like a different lifetime now? Yeah, actually. You know who else was really nice to us when, when they were like, who the fuck are these guys was Johnny and is Harris. Mm-hmm. The, they do like Johnny. You and did Sven, the, I think talked to them much. <laughs> uh, they, I very briefly talked to them. I never really got to you and, yeah. you and Sven though. really did. Yeah. Johnny and is were fucking cool as shit. Johnny did the uh, border series and stuff. And they, they're both like travel and like fashion and stuff. But cool. I just, I always remember. I was like, "Those guys were really nice." To yeah, us. I didn't. I never really got a chance to talk to them, but you guys were always hitting it off. They seemed very nice. Yeah. Um. But uh, what do you say we get into some preguntas? Okay, guys, follow us on Twitter at Gus Buckets and at Eddie Burback. 
Let's um, do it. We're going hot off the presses. Haven't screened any of these dang things. If there's a if there's a bad question, I'm gonna lose it, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna just divorce you if we lose it. If we have a good bad question, I mean, I, sometimes I'm just trying to buy time. I just Some, say words. Yep, and that's fine. And the funny thing is, I bet they they all know as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hot off the presses. Let's take a peek here at Ian Pian One. <laughs> I don't like that. Says my roommate constantly places cups, bowls, boxes, etc., hanging ever so slightly off the edge of tables and countertops. It drives me crazy because it makes it easy to knock them over. But he argues it's just a little quirk. Argues so, it's just a little okay. Well, the thing is, this is just a I've I've come to experience. This is just a difference in some people. Some people are okay. I changed my mind because I even understand. It's not swiping while you're swiping. Just so you know, that's the second photo, and it did. Oh my god, it's a pot with a. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's stressful, Tony. I will send these. Images okay, to yeah. You. Video watches you got. So first, I changed my mind. I was gonna. Be, I was gonna say some people just have more spatial awareness with knocking things over and like knowing that something could potentially fall. But then you showed me ranch on the corner <laughs> of a counter, <laughs> so... and then uh, especially that open sun kiss that is really right. That's not like oh, it's close to the corner. They're doing that for the thrill of the the thrill of the spill. The thrill of the spill, baby. That's what they're doing. They want to add some thrill to their lives, and they're like, "Wouldn't it be great if one of these got knocked over?" They want to. They fuck want shit the up. drama. They, they are, want the drama. They're anarchists, dude. Tony, I just sent them to you in the Discord. By the way, the photo references. Perfect. Um, don't do that, guy. <laughs> That's the thing. Also, um, th- I mean that one's clear. You don't you don't set an open thing on the very edge. This is insane. This does this not make you nervous? Yeah, that makes me... Actually, I trust you implicitly. <clears throat> See how close you can get it to the edge. Wait, is that even on camera? Oh, no, I'll do it right here. Do it right there. Wait, is this on camera? This is on yeah, camera. Yeah, that's on camera. But I guess they wouldn't get the side view. Of it? They or, can see it. Okay. I'm, I'll just narrate it. Okay, guys, we got this can. It is half full. I pushed it, like, over half, and it stayed on. It's staying on. It's about half right now. Get it hanging. <laughs> I knew I had it and it still scared me. That's how little I spill things. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, okay, here's one. At Jackie Boy Richie says, What did your parents do with your old childhood room? Um, the house is gone. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the divorce took the house. <laughs> My mind. old childhood room is kaputs. Never mind. Um, I, I think- loved that room, but uh, my parents did this thing where I cleared it out myself and uh, packed everything in my childhood in boxes and left. So epic. <laughs> I my sister I think is in my childhood room. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's the last Johnson to go through there. No more damn kids in the house. My parents will be empty nesters in a, in a year. That's gonna be weird oh to man, because that's been a collective. Um, <clears throat> I mean, let's see, 18 for me, and then plus, when did I graduate? Like, 2014? So that's like 18. They will have probably had about 26 years of having kids in the house. Wow. That's as old what as I a, am. What an achievement. Oh, yeah. It would just be as old as you are until until, until the year that... Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have been easier math to do. <laughs> it's just how old you are right now. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, honestly, what an achievement. Like, applause to your parents. That's so long. Holy shit. That's a lot. My mom compromised her professional career to raise us, too. And that was pretty epic. My dad actually is really excited. I told you, like, he's back. He's at a job that he really feels fucking passionate about. Fuck yeah, I love yeah. to hear that. He's back into it. He's feeling good and stuff. Gets to work with kids and shit again. Like, it's just pretty. It's epic. It's so epic. <laughs> so epic, guys. You don't even know. Hey, guys. Uh, we didn't forget to record the ads. You did. Anyways, autumn is in the air, the pumpkins are in the patch, and our friends at Manscaped, little forward guys, never met you in my life, are here to make sure you don't carve your pants pumpkins when you're grooming, if you know what I'm saying. I think they mean your dick and balls. Join the 2 million men worldwide using Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code Gus and Eddie. That's all caps, no spaces. Uh, it's time to bundle up with the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Inside the package, you'll find a lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. I, with their 
uh, thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. I don't know what any of that means, but that's it's probably good that I don't make razors for that reason. It also gives you the ability to turn the LED spotlight on and off when you need a more precise shave, plus it's waterproof. What are my balls on Broadway? They need a spotlight? Uh, the performance package also includes the weed whacker to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ear. Ew. Uh, this nose and ear hair trimmer use a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system to, okay, too many words, guys. That's too many words. To provide propi proprietary skin safe technology, which helps uh, prevent uh, nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. <laughs> All right. Seal the deal with the Manscaped liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Everyone knows pumpkin spice lattes and ball deodorant go hand in hand. That's why every time I go to Starbucks, I say, let me get a pumpkin spice latte. Let me also get some ball deodorant. And they say, not only do we not sell deodorant, we've never even heard of ball deodorant. And so I yell and I scream. And then uh, after trimming the pumpkin patch and whacking the leaves, give your balls a boost using the Crop Reviver. Uh, Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package the box the manscape boxers and the shed travel bag get comfy on the home and on the go this season on the home get comfy on the home okay <laughs> get 20 percent off uh, plus free shipping with the code gus at manscape.com that's 20 percent off plus free shipping with the code gus at manscape.com thank you manscape for sponsoring this um, uh, give me all the ball deodorant that you have. Don't give it to anyone else. Okay, um, have fun. Uh, bye. Hi, everybody. Today's episode is sponsored by Green Chef. Thank you so much to Green Chef for sponsoring the episode. Let me tell you a little bit about them, boys, all right? Green Chef makes it easy to eat the immune-boosting foods that you need to stay healthy and fuel a jam-packed end to summer, eh? Huh? Green Chef takes care of meal planning, grocery shopping, and even some food prep, giving you time to tackle some back-to-school season frenetic stuff. Eating well is easier than ever with satisfying home-cooked dinners and options that work around, this is italicized, your lifestyle. Not the other way around, gee dang it. Choose from 30 easy to follow recipes every week with options for keto, paleo, and plant power diets as well as meals to help you eat in a more balanced way. Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit, so you can just feel great about what you're eating, all right? And, and how it got to your table, guy. It's actually the only meal kit that is both plastic and carbon offset. Wow, would you look at that. Listen, if you go to greenchef.com slash Gus and Eddie 100 and use the code Gus and Eddie 100, you can get $100 off including free shipping. That is greenchef.com slash Gus and Eddie 100. Use code Gus and Eddie 100 to get a hundred bucks off, including free shipping. Thank you, Green Chef, for sponsoring today's episode. See you, boys. Um, all right, at Thor, that's not my brother, just some other, not your brother, some other guy, some random Thor, says, if you put one player from every sport wearing full equipment into a gladiator battle, who do you think will win? Football player. Right? Right? Wait. This person says, Hold I'm on. leaning towards a hockey player because they're wearing blades on their feet. Thoughts? Yeah, but you... <clears throat> it's but, not a, there's no ice. Yeah, you're so, just you got certainly weapons on you. You got a you got a hockey stick, but if you're forced to stand on those, I'm assuming they have to stay they can't like take their Actually, I bet they could. It's a gladiator arena. I assume it's just everything you got on your person you can utilize. But I'd assume they'd have to also walk out at least in the skates. Yeah, you definitely And if you're walking out, I feel like a linebacker can really deck you before <laughs> anything happens. Uh well, uh, do the Olympics count? Yes, yeah, any sport. Javelin throw. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. But you get one kill with that, though, pretty much. I'm assuming it's, is it 1v1 or is it everyone at once? I think it's everyone at once. Maybe a hockey player, then. Uh, Hockey's good. I mean, because you need the perfect blend between melee weapon and armor, and I feel like hockey's the best in between. Wait a minute. What? What about, like, an MMA fighter? But they've got no fucking armor on them, though. Like, you think oh. a, a football player just, just charging into a goddamn... Yeah, they have a helmet. Yeah, like, McGregor can punch all fucking day at, you know, LaDamian Tomlinson. He ain't gonna take him down. He's got a helmet on. Huh. Yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's any... If the Olympics count... Oh, um, are we counting, like... Curling? The, I was gonna say, like, the, the skeet shooting. Oh, yeah! Some people have a gun! <laughs> oh, man. But they are 22s. Okay. Still lethal. Still lethal. So 
I feel like if you, it's a sport with a gun or like archery. Mm-hmm. Oh, archery might be good. But there's no defense. That's again, too. It's like you can get maybe one shot off or two, and then you're getting clived. Guarantee you, this topic comes up. <clears throat> Chess players and esports players are going to get real quiet about it being a sport. <laughs> I actually think they're sports, but I think if I was a chess player, I'd be like, no, it's more of a game <laughs> than a sport. <laughs> Hold on. NASCAR? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Formula One. <laughs> Whoa! Fucking You're, it's like a snowplow going through oh there. Oh my god, does Monster Truck get count? Where do you draw the line? I that's, mean, that's more of a stunt pilot. That's just like that's just it. Is it opens such a it's a slippery slope. Well, NASCAR is a sport, but your ge- racing but is a sport. Wearing full equipment, but I guess equipment isn't fully like. Is your car the equipment? You know, like does a jockey? No. Is your horse a, an equipment? I'd say for a jockey, maybe, but I think NASCAR, I, like in the sport, it would be, but I, I guess we're, we're probably thinking, no, if a hockey player gets their ice skates and a stick, yeah. then you get a car for NASCAR. You get a car, but you can't wear a car. Yeah, but it's your equipment. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Imagine this. The, every, there's that gauntlet for sports, and the winner is Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> He's like, I'm the most physical champion out here. He just drifted into everybody. Jesus okay, Christ. let's say the car stuff doesn't count. Okay, he's non- getting hit with a javelin in the first five seconds. That's true. It's going through the, the rebar. Um, I don't care how much, how many Home Depots Tony Stewart's been to. He's <laughs> getting shot in the face. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Shouldn't have said in the face. It was a little too violent. <laughs> Sorry, Tony Stewart. I don't know anything about Tony Stewart other than he was his face was at Home Depot when I was a kid. Yeah, I think the hockey player might have it though. If it's non-car division, but I, I just know the second we. We this gets posted anywhere, the comments are gonna be like, "They didn't think of this." Oh, man, yeah, probably. We're we're missing some just bleeding sport here. Yeah, I feel like a rugby player would do pretty well. Probably do well, but they don't even have any they armor have on though. It's really uh, being in a full full uh, uh, gear for for football is also a really big one. I feel like I feel like that's allows also you hockey. To, yeah, like football would allow you to be the most mobile because your cleats are so gripping and those are weapons in and of themselves. Yeah, you know, and then it's like you have the best full body coverage. Like almost every part of your body's covered except for like some joints. You I know? truly feel bad for like a tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta think, dude. Fucking name any tennis player besides uh, Serena that, and Venus. That guy who swears a lot, Andy. Milanakis. No, I was also trying to think. I was also trying to think. Um, who's the guy that swears a lot? John Claude Van Damme. Nope. Mister Crawley. Mister Freeze. Mister Freeze. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Billy Jean King. Is yeah, another that, one. No, that is one. I um, can only think of lady tennis players. There's a. Uh, um, his name is Novak something, but I almost said BJ Novak. I was <laughs> and then I thought Brandon Novak from Jackass. <laughs> so it turns out we know a lot of a little bit about tennis. We know a lot of one namers. Eddie, I'm gonna give you a lightning round here. Give me the first name of somebody that like that you actually know that plays the sport here, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh gymnastics. Uh why wait, this is actually bad though, on on the spot for even uh, I know. <laughs> gymnastics. No, I Gabby Douglas. Right? Boom. Yep, yeah, there sorry. you go. That's, uh, swimming. That's uh, not Michael. Michael Phelps. Not that's not Michael Phelps. Dude, you couldn't. Gun to my head, I couldn't tell you another swimmer. I only know Ryan Lochte. Oh, Ryan Lochte. <laughs> no, I probably could. Okay, just keep going. Sorry, Football. I panicked. For, uh, Walter Payton. Good one. Um, baseball. Uh, Babe Ruth. Uh, rugby. That's unfair. Rugby. Uh, Greg from Love Island. Oh, okay. There you go. Good <laughs> shit. Okay, I'll give you one more. Um, uh, uh, track and field. Any track and field. Um. Uh. Why, Usain Bolt. Good. That's the only one I would have known too. I don't know any. Oh, Tyson Gay is one too. They ran for the U.S. Ah. And I remember it because you know, guy's name is Gay. It's you remember that. You a remember bit more. it. You it sticks remember out. It. it sticks out. All right. Here, what do we got else here? We got uh, at Snaky Boy John says you're about to meet aliens for the first time, and each human on her on Earth is allowed to present three things to show the aliens. What do you bring? Oh. Okay. Wait. Let's. You can set the phone down. We're spending some time on this one. <laughs> What would I bring to aliens? First of all, a warhead. <laughs> Dude, the, you, you the trying candy. to start fucking intergalactic warfare? I just with these want guys? them to try it. What it's if the it, same thing is like when people go back in the past and they talk about giving like a like in the 1800s having like a small village boy eat a warhead? 
just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that one before? Not, that was on Twitter a bit. Like, not a small village boy. <laughs> yeah, you just give it to a kid and <laughs> see what they think. If I was a villain, I, a time-traveling villain, I'd go back to Victorian England and I would give the little poor beggar boys war. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> sir. Please, sir. Suck on that. <laughs> you if, At that time, you'd think you were getting poisoned. You probably would. There's no way you'd be like, it's a fun treat. Oh. <laughs> It's a bit sour. I didn't know they made blue raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying head. to think. Uh, okay, so I bring a warhead first. Um, second, I think I would bring. Honestly, there's a chance I'd bring him a Nintendo Switch with Breath of the Wild in it, just to be oh, like, man. "There's some good in us. We can make something nice." Look you know. At that. Um, third. I'd bring a gun, but I get to hold it. <laughs> How are you holding it? Because you were like pointing it right. F- trigger discipline, not using it. Finger <laughs> on the trigger, just in case they get a little crafty. That's good. I'll think of another one too. What do you, what are you bring? I'm gonna bring them. Um, oh man, I like any vehicle would be just pale in comparison to their ship, you know? Because right. at first I'm like, dude, like a dirt bike or something. Uh-huh. It's like, bro, they bring them a Kia Soul. <laughs> Show them the commercial with the hamster. I was gonna say, I was gonna, a Kia Soul, one of the hamsters you is go, my second. This is real. They're like, they're like, where's the hamster? I'm like, we don't, they're not that big. We, we had to put them down. <laughs> <laughs> they were the only sentient to like, I guess they're not, they're always, or would they be, why am I thinking of? They were sentient. Yeah. No, I'm saying they were, but hamsters. Yeah, this, are I'm also, saying the ham- hamsters yeah, were I sentient. Know, uh, but, um, they were the first hamsters that could walk and dance, and we're like, we had to put them down. They started to get too advanced for us. You guys get it. Yeah, you guys get it. You know. So bring them a castle. <laughs> no, but for yours, so no vehicle. No vehicle. Um, I think that if it was a food item, soda. I got to give them some pop, you know? Oh, man. They're going to – I feel like it might kill them. And you were going to give them a warhead. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> give them some Mountain Dew. See no, what happens. not Mountain Dew. <laughs> some Mountain gonna, Dew Code Red. I'm going to give them Diet Dr. Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> all, and you're like, eh, I mean, I guess. Just but. to fuck with them, you give them RC Cola, and you're like, this is the best we have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's <laughs> the only the thing one. they know, then that's it, right? Like, yeah. Um, I'd maybe fuck, fuck around and just bring them a Beef Wellington. <laughs> Be like, this is a normal food we eat pro- pretty much every day. With our hands, by the way. So <laughs> you <laughs> eat full thing, one one swallow. Get it down, dude. Entire beef Wellington. <laughs> You're like, at first, on the swallow, it's a little harder the way down, but then the bread sh- kind of shaves off and the meat <laughs> slides down. <laughs> shaves off. Oh, my God. I would fuck with the aliens so much. I'd bring a strobe light and just shine it in their eyes. <laughs> I go... This will get you real high. <laughs> <laughs> flashing a really powerful strobe in there. You do that, and then I'll go up behind them while you're doing that, and I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> you, I go, I'm doing that, and then I go, I point down to you. You get on your hands and knees, and we tabletop them. <laughs> we strobe them and tabletop the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> That'll start a war. Imagine how embarrassing it would be to meet a species lesser than you and you get tabletopped by them. <laughs> Imagine that the, a fucking spaceship lands on the White House front lawn and Biden and Harris tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> Biden is the table and he, he falls over as it's happening because he's not strong enough to stay up. Um, oh, dude, what else would I do to fuck with them? Oh, my God, there's so many things. I get those, like, traveling moon, the bottle rockets that go... <laughs> 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 I'd uh, I well, one. It'd be kind of cool to give them a VR headset. That would be cool. But I bet they already have shit like that. They probably do. They could probably have a hollow deck. They could just go on. Yeah, stuff that are st- or things that are uniquely human. We should give them, and then that'll freak them out. Yeah. Um, a copy of Ted Two on Blu-ray. That would really fuck with them for sure. <laughs> so you're gonna want to wake up at two thirty a.m. and watch this. <laughs> um, oh, we should probably bring those uh, those um, the ball uh, the ball belts we got the ball bras the ball Russ's trusses. Russ's trusses. Imagine yeah. walking up wearing nothing but a Russ's truss, <laughs> and you're like, "This is a common. Uh, this is our formal wear." So look how prominent our scrotum is when we wear this Russ's truss. Exactly. Oh man, I'm trying to think even more. There'd be I definitely for sure. Okay, the one thing I have for sure, I definitely shine a strobe light in their eyes. Yeah, and we tabletop them. That's first thing. Imagine, <laughs> imagine you uh, have them smell some cologne, but you spray it too much in their face. Yeah, you pop a warhead in their mouth and you strobe them and tabletop. Them. <laughs> And then when you're on the ground, 
when they're on the ground, wind up one of those monkeys from Toy Story 3 that goes, <laughs> and just let it go around them. Oh, man. Oh, man. Anyway, how's about we open some fucking mail? Yes, let's do it. All right, I'm going to oh, get man. some mail. I think, uh, sorry guys, if this was a real scenario, I wonder, you know, if this will ever find an alien and They're they'll be like, oh man, right it's, if this is the only thing, they'd be like, we should probably kill them, right? I mean, if I was an alien and I looked at us, I would just kill us, frankly. Yeah. I'd start with us too. <laughs> yeah, I would start with me and you. This is time for some mail. All right, guys. Uh, oh, it says, please don't bend. They have a sticker that says, please don't bend. Ooh, it's official. Guys, all right, yeah, still good on mail for a little bit. Um, this is a beautiful, look, do you see how cool, really quick, I'm not trying to it? show the address. Look at how the address looks, look at all these stickers. Is that from Junie from Spy Kids? I think so. Holy shit. This is Junie from California for mine, and then what's yours? Whoa, okay. You opening that? All right, I'll wait. Okay, so yeah, this is from Jacob N, and it's from Kingsville, Ontario, Jacob N. And it says VHS tape on the front, and I'm going to show the address. Mm -hmm. All right. First, the note. You're going to like what's in here, i got to tell you. Oh, okay. I'm excited. Dear Gus and Eddie, hey, boys, found your channels. I love your channels and the podcast. I'm on my third listen through. On one episode. Oh, that's a that's a good wow. bit of dedication there, by the way. On one episode, IDK, which one? You mentioned how disappointing the Back to the Future Netflix documentary was. That's I'm a, forever ago. Dude, yeah. yes, yes. I'm a huge fan myself and totally agree. It was dog ass. Thank you. Then last year, just before COVID hit us, I found this relic at a garage sale. I entrust to you boys... Read him the title. Didn't even fucking the know. Secrets of the Back to the Future tr trilogy on VHS? What is this? Right? Is I Join host Kirk Cameron as he answers fans' most asked questions about the Back to the Future trilogy with a com combination of clear, or cleverly edited clips never before... Here, here, you read that. Never before seen footage. There's interviews and stuff, too. I'm right. into it. I'm into it. I hope you Midwest boys have access to a VCR. If not, fuck me, I guess. Um, P.S. I usually listen to you guys while doing nature photography and drawing. If you want to shout out my Instagram, it's J.S. Neal. Thank you. Love you. Uh, Jacob from Ontario. This is a documentary that they did. I didn't know that existed. Yeah. Also, badass looking cover. Yeah. This that's, is really cool. That's tight as hell. It's, it's, it's shrink wrapped. It's packaged. Yeah. What the fuck? This is awesome. I didn't know that this piece of media was out there. Oh, it's, uh, it's Canadian. Oh. Canadian home video PG rating, it says on it. That... But it's is it eighties PG? Uh, probably. Which there could be. Gonna, you could see a boob. You're gonna hear the word fuck for sure. I bet there'll be one Leah Thompson tit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Take this back. <laughs> Take back. <laughs> Can I just say though, when I was growing up, Leah Thompson was my actual girlfriend. I don't believe that that's true. I wanted her to be my girlfriend, but <laughs> not the mom, the Marty's mom version, the regular nice, charming young lady version. Uh, the one that still wanted to sleep with Marty. You got some things to work out. But. I could, but I was going to transport myself back before Marty got there. And I'd say, Marty, please, man, it's been real dry lately. Let me have your mom. <laughs> what are you, a fucking 13 year old? What? No, I. At when, the time? At when I was that age. Yeah. Also, she wasn't 13 in the movie. She was like 17. I'm you at the time. Yeah, when I was like 17, her age. Oh, 17. Okay. You know, I was like, Marty, let, give me, I, I need to score, Marty. This, okay. There's a little drawing here. It looks like dolphins, and it says we can't swim, and we wouldn't if we could. It's dolphins in boots. Oh, I like that. These are these are easily some of the more fuckable dolphins I've ever seen. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! It's a little beach scene, and it says Gus and Eddie on it. This is so cool. Holy crap. Look at this. Ooh, is this... What is the... We got some arts and crafts. ...material here? Okay. We got... Ooh! Looking hot. There's a little, there's a little drawing of a, a bird uh, doing a kickflip, and it says Tony Squawk. <laughs> I like that it's one. It's fun because Hawk would have worked, but Squawk is way funnier. It's like a less threatening bird. Um, here, check this out. Hey, Gus and Eddie, uh, I love your podcast, especially when trying to make art. Uh, I wanted to send you guys some of the things I've been making. There's some earrings for Chrissy to be, uh, oh, uh, wait, sorry, to be, for Chrissy to be oversharing. Oh, is my talent always, uh, or anyways, you can find my art on Depop and on Instagram at Closed Book Club. Thank you for uploading through the lockdown and helping me push through my art block. Dude, I actually, I can't believe we did the podcast during the lockdown. Also, there's more in here. So oh, good. This is beautiful, by the way, Junie. Thank you. 
Um, I can't believe we found things to talk about. It's what it's just every time I hear that, I'm like, how the hell are we? Huh. And I, no joke, I probably don't remember 98% of oh, what we of talked those? about. Because we weren't face to face, so those weren't real conversations. It was mostly me staring at my wall, Ooh, making poop jokes. In here. Oh, it's the earrings. Yo. Holy crap. There we go. Ooh. And then, ooh, keychains for us. That is Dinosaur keychains. Oh, my God. Fuck yeah. Certified. Thank you for rules. Certified Mama Mia moment right there, dude. Certified Mama Mia Mama Mia moment. Mama Mia moment. Mama Mia moment. <laughs> That's what I accidentally just said. This time I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the doors. Ooh, wait. The where do you where? Any of the doors I need it to be on, I'm gonna put it right on there. Okay. I'll just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it for mail. Grand, oh man, grand, grand, grand. Oh man, I'm due for a rewatch of Back to the Future. It's been a little while. Uh, it's been a bit for me too. I need to see some more behind the scenes shit. You know what I was just thinking today? Truthfully, what? I don't think I've seen a movie in three months. Wh Hold on, really? Yeah, I'm. I'm honestly thinking. I think the last movie I saw was when I saw A Quiet Place Part Two three months ago. So you're just saying not even just in theaters, you're saying at home? Period. Really? I, That's so out of character for you. The last two years of my life, even pre-quarantine stuff, I just have completely stopped watching movies. Well, what I was going to tell you as well, then coming this week, we should start watching Lord of the Rings because I know you want to do it. We've um, been saying it for a while. Okay. Yes, I've already seen it just for people, that, but I want to do a rewatch. I will. However, I don't know if I can handle the marathon all the way through. Nobody should ever be subjected to that. Movie cool. marathons, I hate. It did, but the extended is what you should watch, right? Yes. So extended, we break it up in a marathon, say, spanning over like two weeks. Yeah. yeah. But still, we watch them close together. <clears throat> exactly. I can never do like two in one day even. It's rough. Cool. Because I, I, like, I was like, I know... If you want, if you wanted to do that, that's like the special thing. And so yeah. I was like, but I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I fucking love it. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm amped on this. Yeah, then. that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a good one. Um, I'm excited nice, for dude. it. Okay. Also, we gotta, we gotta do another one of. Uh, we both been uh, streaming way more. Yeah, and we gotta oh. do also follow us on Twitch, guys. For real, go follow us on Twitch right now. It's, the link is in the, the description. Do we it. stream a lot. And uh, uh, we got to do another PC game stream. Yes. Gotta and I think ugly. We, we decided it's better if we do it over the internet than on Discord, right? Because then, then we get everyone following both of us watching. Boom. Yeah, we can do the squad stream It was shit. fun in person, but also I feel like not like playing the game and just watching it is more engaging than sitting next to each other for the one game on the one screen. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, and it's so doable with the PC thing because it's just trade off who plays it. And then it's just the same display for people and yeah. stuff. We'll do it. Oh, man, I'm just fucking it. There's so many fun things. I'm starting to get into a good, a good overwhelmed state where I'm uh -huh. like, I'm excited for a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. I'm really, I you know, it's fun. It's a fun time. We got another Pregunta we yes. want to look over. Okay, let's take a peek. Let me look. I'm okay. also going to go to it. Guys, this comes from uh, at Jeff Bezos and says, could you tell Mackenzie I fucking miss her? Uh, really freaking sorry. Uh, we'll not do that again. Is that his current girlfriend? No, it's his ex-wife. Oh, oh no! He he learned uh, how to fly a helicopter, even though he hates it for his new girlfriend. I don't think he's going back to his. <laughs> I forgot ex about that. Yeah. Um, uh, also, yeah, I I saw somebody tweet now that Grimes and Elon Musk broke up because I'm sure you saw that. Yeah. Somebody's like Elon's about to become the most divorced guy ever. Oh, Bezos already has that title. Yeah, you can't fucking. He beat bought it. a f uh, five hundred million dollar yacht after getting divorced. That guy is insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that weird ass fucking Bill Gates interview? By the way, we're talking on billionaires and no. shit this last week and stuff. It was it was in PBS Newshour and they really pressed him about like the old Jeffy Boy stuff. Oh, you know? what do you have to say? He, he goes like, "Well, you know, he's dead now, so like it was like so badly handled." I gotta see you, that. You gotta what go watch fuck? it. He didn't, and I I will say too. Uh huh. He was so pressed, didn't jump over one office chair during the interview. See, Bill Gates. I'm not trying to give you advice because I feel like some horrible things might come out, but <laughs> you, you could distract all of us in America by just jumping a chair again. He's getting old, though. Imagine he jumps the chair and just breaks <laughs> his ankle on the landing. Well, imagine PBS knew it. <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 I made oh, Microsoft. Oh, 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 oh. Get him a Xbox. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's see. If you could replace, this is from, from Eric Horns Down for Life. 
If you could replace any company logo with a new phallic shaped one, what company would it be and why? What, oh, that's a good one because what, what's the funniest brand name that once paired with a phallic looking logo is just like, come on, that's so on the nose. That's one thing I want to do. And also, I would probably choose JP Morgan Chase because how funny would it be to one of the biggest, like most serious companies in the world that just have a dick? I like that. Imagine trying to withdraw from your bank and they're like, there's just a cock looking back here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Hardee's. Oh, Hardee's. Or in similar fashion, Carl's Jr. There you go. There's probably a couple of good ones, but Hardee's, I Mike feel like, drop. is pretty. <laughs> 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 um, I'm trying to think. That uh, is a good. Honestly, yeah. I literally don't even know what a fucking. I don't know if there's a better one, honestly. Um, Shakey's Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there. Damn. I actually don't know now. I think that might be one of the best ones. Anything I can think of is not even oh, half as good. What? Long John Silvers. Okay. Okay. I'm just okay. I'm just rattling them off. How's, how does he do it? Red Lobster? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Should have retired. Quit while you're Should have retired. Should have retired. <laughs> Ch- Chili's? No, shit. I actually was just thinking Chili's, and I had while you were saying it, I had just had that in my head of Chili's. Don't say it. <laughs> no, because I was like, you know, your penis shrinks if it's chili, but it was just too much of a stretch. So yeah. It didn't work. Uh. Fuddruckers, it's another good one where you'd be like, that's about right. Yeah, something felt Ruckers. wrong about that name always. I'd pass Sounds it as a fucker. kid and I'd be like, I don't think that's allowed. You ever go by a ground round? Is that a. I feel like we had this conversation once on the podcast before. That's no, true. I've never been to Fuddruckers. We should go. Okay, I'll go there. Ground round's the one where you can they give you peanuts oh, to eat. Oh, it's not an item at Fuddruckers? No, it I is. I thought the ground round was some kind of uh, uh, ground beef type. <laughs> 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 well, we got top round beef out here, too. Okay. Ground round is a place. I don't know if they're still in business. My dad said he used to go when he was a kid, and you could go there. It was a franchise. And their gimmick was that they'd give you peanuts, like in-shelled peanuts before the meal, and they wanted you to throw them on the ground. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, that's stupid. Terrible fucking gimmick. (laughs) But fun if you're a kid. Throwing some stuff on the ground. That's fun. That's pretty fun. I can do that. All right, I got a really high. S- whoa, whoa, Real up. quick, just you take you take the aliens to ground round, and you're like, this is the finest dining we have. <laughs> Don't step on those peanuts on the way in. <laughs> you give them a fajita from Chili's, <laughs> and you're like, this is the best meal we've made as a species. <laughs> you go. You hear that sizzle? Wait ten seconds. <laughs> you go. You have to eat it while it's sizzling. <laughs> I just keep lying to them. Pick up the plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an oyster. You got to shovel the fucking thing to play it in. Uh, all right. Here's a cerebral question. At Wyatt Redding says, if all mammals laid eggs, which egg would you want to eat? Oh, uh, I don't know. Elephant egg? <laughs> you want to try to eat a whole elephant egg? Jesus. No. Uh, that just be. Uh, I feel like an elephant egg would not taste good. It would be too big. It would be too chewy, I bet. I don't know, dude. That's such a weird question. Like gelatinous. You ever make oobleck in school? No. You know what made me so mad? What? There was always oobleck being made in my school, <laughs> and I went through the whole run with other classes making them, and I never got to make it. Damn. Every year, I'd go on the bus, and a couple of classes that weren't mine would be like, we made oobleck. It was so Where's fucking cool. Right, dude? Isn't I was that, so upset. It's just cornstarch and water, right? I think you can make it now. You're an yeah, adult but it's with a disposable. Yeah, if you make it at home. That's <laughs> it's different if you when you're at school, you're not learning while you make oobleck, and that's what makes the oobleck so cool is yeah. that you're not being taught things from a book. We did the thing that I'm sure you've seen videos of on the internet where we filled a little baby pool with it in summer school and tried to run across it. Whoa! Because it is that thing. That's fun, guys. For those that don't know, I think it's like it's some ratio of water and cornstarch. And oobleck is if you hold it and squeeze it, it like becomes a solid, and then you let go of it, and it like immediately melts. It's so kind of cool. And if you ru- you can run across it because it's like te- I don't remember the science terms, but you can run across yeah. oobleck. <laughs> is there? I'll say this. I've seen mm-hmm. this echoed before. Is there a greater feeling in your... Will you ever reach a higher high than the um, elementary school Christmas parties? Nope. That was I, it. I actually... And I'm fine. I will enjoy maybe maybe helping out in my community when I have kids with those and, and helping give that joy to, to children. I don't think it ever got any better than that. 
that was it. It was the best of both worlds. Like you get presents at school and it's like the days off and there's just movies and treats and shit. It's oh my, especially I'll even say like, even in like eighth grade when they'd be like, yeah, we're going to throw on like a, a version of Christmas Carol. And you just be like, that's it today. Yeah. No what? math. <laughs> no math. Just that. What day is it? <laughs> the, the first day of school, they make you do math pretty much. Isn't yeah. that's all, all that's the two opposites of school highs and lows. The highest high is Christmas uh, in elementary school. The lowest low is in high school when you're still tired and the school year's just starting and they're like, all right, day one of math, let's get started. What kind of cruel joke is that? No, it's rough. That's rough. That, that's what I felt like in college going to new classes is just roll, doing the roulette wheel. Like, who's going to be the bitch that gives me homework <laughs> on the first day? It's like, let's please, can we just read the syllabus and then I leave? That's I the perfect it. first class. I fucking hate it, dude. And then that's you're also playing another mini game of roulette of like, which one of these professors is going to be the one that says like, oh, I got a really strict attendance policy here. Uh -huh. it's like, okay, okay. I had, I think I mentioned this before. I had a professor uh, pull one over on us where he, he said the whole year that you had to sign in for a sheet for attendance and then told us at the end of the year that it didn't matter to the grade. Oh, my God. And it's like, I'll respect the game there. Yeah. It's like, you're not penalizing me, but the thing is. I skipped some classes, still, yeah. so I kind of got away with it. I just told one of my professors, who seemed like somebody that was very empathetic, I definitely took advantage of their human nature, and I said, hey, I got IBS, so I'm going to be leaving class a lot. So you lied? I just lied to them. That's a lie. Yeah. And you're admitting it on the... Yeah. You, you, they can't take your degree away, right? I didn't violate any attendance policies. I just would leave during the class. You just weren't truthful. I just was... Li I lied to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> The way you're just like, yeah, it was a, it was a three hour class, and I would leave oh, those. Oh, okay, actually, say no more. <laughs> three hour class. Those are the ones where it was ninety percent of the classes were work times. You know. Oh, okay, that's a bit different. Yeah, and and the the person was really nice, and I felt bad because I the whole time I was just like, this is like lying to your dog, or something, because <laughs> they were so sweet and understanding and shit. But I, those were the classes where for the like uh, for a year. I would leave and I would shoot my YouTube videos during that class. Uh -huh. I would just walk around campus and I'd be like, all right, where's a pun in a sign or here's yep. a joke I could make. So if I didn't lie to that guy, I probably wouldn't be here today. I would say for, for my, and I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but a long time ago, because I know we pretty frequently will, or at least used to talk about high school and college a lot. Um, I'd say the rudest thing I did to a professor was I had on my first semester Friday movie class that was uh, about three hours, and it was the my last class of the week. Mm -hmm. I never did that again for any scheduling. Um, and uh, we would learn for the first half. We'd do actual education, then watch a movie. Mm -hmm. So, like, you could watch it at home. I Maybe I'd have a different appreciation for it now. He put on that – you remember that movie Cloud Atlas that came out when we were younger? Yeah. Just a – at least from what I remember, I did not like Cloud Atlas. <laughs> I gave Cloud Atlas about 20 minutes, and I was just like, I'm just going to leave. Because <laughs> yeah. it's dark, and I, uh, I, I just walked out, and I, I went home, and I was like, I'm, I just can't do Cloud Atlas today. No. Give me that. I just can't do Cloud Atlas today. I don't think I could do it any day, frankly. Yeah, I never, I never, uh, actually for the class, I did watch it, but I've never watched it since. True. So did I did watch it at home. So what's the difference, really? That's true. Did you do the big brain play where you left your stuff outside the classroom? Uh, yeah, I didn't even bring stuff in anymore for Good. it. Good. That's smart. And would, if he gives me a paper, I'll carry the paper out. I started doing that for a sex education class I wanted to get out of class. Uh, in, in college, mind I, And I will say, whenever we talk about the any getting out of class stuff, I'm never applying it to your actual major. If you're actually – for, for your real major, I feel like if it's necessary for the like the, the knowledge you need – but some of the gen ed stuff, especially my experience with community college gen eds, they'd be like, hey, here's your professor. They've literally never taught before. They're just kind of somebody who's around. And uh, you have to take this in its health. Why? Health? Health. You, I feel like your college was this mix of like relaxed but still a real school, you know, yeah. like where you, where you could kind of like you. I feel like, do you think it was maybe, what was the, what's the size of that school? Like, I think the student wise? body's 10,000. Oh, that's pretty small. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty tight-knit community. Yeah, definitely. We knew so, everybody. Oh, yeah, I'm even thinking when I was there at the bar that you'd probably see everybody you'd out see, every night. Yeah, all the time. Professors, too, all the time. Like, Oh, yeah. I'd see my professors at the bar, like my, my the head of my film 
class is actually a guy that's out in California now. Like, we're still chilling shit. I just run into him at the bar. Hey, what's that's going on? That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny, though. Um, you ever run into anybody when we've been out here from uh, college or def- probably not hometown for just math-wise? But yeah. Like, just a completely random run into somebody? I have not yet had somebody from uh, Chicago that have run into suburbs uh, yeah. that have run into just, like, out of nowhere. I had... Uh, I have I've run into other stout people that said that they were there when I was there. Like I've run they into didn't people. Know exactly. Yeah. Okay. Where they'd be like, "Hey, you were actually in my like I think you were in my like econ class freshman year or something." I was like, "Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't." You know, yeah. I no, there's some people. There's I mean, there, there's my your memory of a college class of the people in it goes right out the door the next time you're scheduling the next year. Yeah. There's some friends you make in some classes that you're like they're they're gone out of here. They were great people, but. Mm-hmm. My capacity's full for every class everywhere, you yeah. know? You know, it has been fun, and it's been... I've talked about this a bit before, but it's been bittersweet going back to, like, Menominee, you know? and Because uh-huh. uh, right now, like, I graduated three and a half years ago. That's not super long. Is it three? Three years ago, pretty much? Uh, we moved out here three years ago, so... About uh, three, then. So I'd say three and a half, because it was, like... July is when we moved out here. So yeah. Probably three and a half years ago, yeah. Three school years, though. Like, this school year is just starting now. So, like... Yeah, and I even noticed it a little bit when I went back this summer, like in June, to to just go around to, you know, the art students got together. I saw Curtis and everybody else over there. But um, in, in the years that I've been able to go back there, there is a comfort in going around and not knowing a lot of people, but just uh-huh. looking and being like, that's that guy. I remember that guy over there. Just, uh-huh. it, just the faces. You remember yeah. faces like nuts. You're like, there's this guy. Oh, that, oh that, that girl worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like people you never talk to, but there's something about that comfort of like, Oh, this little world that I was in for a little bit Dude, is still kind of intact. You know what I there's mean? There's uh, a uh, at my the Seven Eleven. I get my uh, French vanilla coffee. At. You know, especially my big guilty pleasure is and I've mentioned on the podcast before. I'm sure is the 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 button press Seven uh, Eleven French vanilla coffee. It is not good for you. It is not. I would even say good, but it's like <laughs> a hot chocolate coffee that has probably so much caffeine. I just feel shaky. I drink coffee all the time, but that yeah. one really gets me. Um, but uh, the the guy that uh, owns that Seven Eleven, I really got to know, and he, I thought when I was in middle school, was like the mean guy at Seven Eleven. But I realize now we we're shitty middle schoolers. I never did anything wrong, but of course he's gonna. You see a thirteen year old boy, and you're like, get out of here! Yeah. Like you suck. You're gonna yeah. do something <laughs> wrong. Uh, is there any worse human than like a like a uh, sixth grade boy? Yeah, who's with a couple other sixth grade boys? Yeah, especially? they're up to no good. Um, but, uh, yeah, then I got to know him, and then even when I moved uh, out here, when I'd go back, he'd be like, I haven't seen you for a while. And I was like, yeah, I moved out to California. And then I'd come back, and he'd go, how's California going? It's just like, it's those people where you're just like, ah, oh, I hope you're doing all right. Yeah. You know, just have little exchanges, and I hope he's doing good. I hate that guy, dude. I got, what? Fuck you never even him. met him. I just, he sounds like a prick. Actually, I think you, uh, have bought a, uh, you bought a sandwich at that 7-Eleven one time. Don't tell these we, people my habits. <laughs> and I said, you're buying a sandwich at 7-Eleven? He said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was one of those shitty turkey ones. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> and I remember being like, well, that's his choice for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I crave that terrible gas station sandwich. The sandwiches I can't follow you for. I can follow you for a lot of bad foods, but if it's like some kind of like produce like fresh sandwich thing, how, what do those even taste like? Just, just if you... If you hucked a white person in a wood chipper, it would just taste like that. <laughs> just this pale, shitty mayonnaise, American cheese, like uh-huh. crappy, like Wonder Bread kind of stuff. I hear you. Well, maybe I maybe I need to try one. Also, I mentioned before for the podcast, one of these weeks, I I decided I'm gonna give Arby's a try on the podcast. I know you like Arby's. I've heard some good things lately. Yeah, and I know as being in the camp of not never having Arby's, but just hating something about it. Sure. I think it's time to change. I think here's what we do is we get the set all set up uh, and have it be ready to go at a moment's notice. And then we go get Arby's and bring it back here fresh and eat it. So it's like the, the freshest possible experience given yes. the situation. Would well. you guys like to hear our Arby's judgment on the podcast? Tell us later. Uh, not now. We'll obviously. wait. No, we'll wait. We'll just we'll let's, wait. let's not do any more podcasts and just wait till next okay. time. We'll just wait for your answer. What rhymes with Arby so we could Breeze Darby? No, but that doesn't. We can't use that for the try, trying the 
Barbecue throw at some, Arby's, dude. Throw some Arby on the Barbie. Well, we're not we're not barbecuing the Arby's though. How long do we have to wait? How could they give us feedback if we don't give this to Tony to edit? We have to take this the cards out of the camera. This isn't live. We've literally never been live. We don't have the equipment to be live. We're n- what would we be connected to? The cameras are just sitting on their own. Our audience. I don't think you've ever done that once in your life. Anyways. I don't like... Whatever you're doing. I think you smell and I'm tasting it. <laughs>